the alley of the keys are to the glory days at the stick. From who's got it better than us to brick by brick. It's always the 49ers way from off season to game day. Yeah, we talk back. It's the 49ers cut back. It's 49ers Cutback Podcast time. Welcome to the show, everyone. Ready to talk about some stock up 49ers because 49ers are about to head into the Philadelphia Eagles game. They're going to need all hands on deck to be able to beat the Eagles, who are currently the number one seed in the NFC. And of course, many believe that the 49ers are actually the best team in the NFL, and this is a perfect opportunity for them to go out there and prove it. But there's some players that have been stepping up for the 49ers, whether that's because they've been called to duty or because they have to because of injury. And I want to go through those players and just talk about the impact that they are having on the San Francisco 49ers in a variety of different ways. Watching all the film, you get a real clear idea of how the 49ers are winning. And the numbers always dictate that. But there's some things that fly under the radar that maybe people don't see. But these playmakers are starting to do big things for the 49ers and helping in key roles to help promote the San Francisco 49ers to be the team they are. They went through a little bit of a lull during the middle of the season, a three-game losing streak. Uh, But before that and then after that, they have played the best football in the entire NFL. And they couldn't do that without these players stepping up their game and playing at an extremely high level. Exactly what you need. You need stock up players be able to make an impact on your football team. And if you want to go stock up in your betting game, turn to bet online. The holiday season is off and rolling with NFL in full stride to the NBA and NHL hitting midseason form. Bet online is your number one destination for all your sports wagering info. With up to minute sports wagering news, odds, trends, and predictions, bet online is the top spot for everything pro and amateur sports and not just the big four. Bet Online has info available at your fingertips with both desktop and mobile access at any time for almost any sport that is played. From MMA to international soccer, head to Bet Online today and remember to use our promo code BELIEVE, that's B L E A V, for your 50% welcome bonus on your first deposit. Bet Online, where the game starts. So, stock up 49ers. First place I have to start and you know, I, I was going to go a, a different player here, but I'm going to start with Ambry Thomas. And Ambry Thomas has been absolutely fantastic since he came back in just a couple of weeks ago. Ambry Thomas was struggling a little bit, uh, to say the least, when he started the season. The 49ers and Steve Wilkes tried to go with a system that put Diamond Lenore in at the nickel and Ambry Thomas outside versus Pittsburgh and against the Los Angeles Rams. Well, during that Rams game, Ambry Thomas got benched, and they went to a different player on the inside. They went to Isaiah Oliver, and they pretty much rolled with him through the first five games, or you know, the the, basically two through five, and then through most of the losing streak. When they came out of the bye, they went back to their original thought. They put Ambry Thomas on the outside. They moved Diamond Lenore in. Since then, Ambry Thomas has been fantastic. From getting a strip uh, that he returned for a touchdown that was ultimately called back because of sideline interference by Steve Wilkes and others. Uh, But just a big-time play. He's had pass breakups. And then this week, he capped it off on Thanksgiving against Seattle. Now, it didn't surprise me. I had actually called for him to have an interception in this game, and he made me right, so I appreciate Ambry Thomas for doing that. But his play and the fact that he was playing more sticky coverage, being locked onto these receivers with the pass rush increasing, has made it easier for him to be able to make an impact. But his numbers in this game... He had one INT, there was four targets thrown his way, he had one forced incompletion, and he had a 20.8 passer rating allowed, two receptions allowed for 16 yards. So Ambry Thomas is coming out there, yeah, you might make a catch on him, he's tackling you right there. Oh, you make a a long throw, it's got the potential of him driving on it and making an interception. And the reason I wanted to talk about Ambry Thomas first, because of how pivotal he has been to helping this football team. He has been extremely pivotal to helping the defense play the way that they've played since the bye. Yes, Chase Young has made a huge impact on this team. The pass rush has been phenomenal. But they had to get solid play from the secondary. 
We already knew Diamond or Lenore could do it. He's one of the better ones. He's able to play inside and out. His stock is always going up. But when it came to the outside, you had to have Ambry Thomas step up. It's the only way it worked. If not, you were going to go back to Diamond or Lenore, and you were probably going to go back to the inside with Isaiah Oliver and just live with the consequences. That's what you had to do. But with Ambry Thomas stepping up and playing to the level the 49ers believed he was capable of when they drafted him in the third round out of Michigan, they had the potential now to get a player in there uh, that can make plays. And now look at how good that draft could be. You get Ambry Thomas with a third-round comp pick, and you get Diamond Lenore with a fifth-round pick. Looks like you did a very good job in that draft getting the football players that you need. That's not even including that they also got Talano Hufanga in that draft. What a secondary draft. We've, we're used to really good secondary drafts when it comes to the 49ers, right? That 1981 draft that saw the Niners get Ronnie Lott and Eric Wright, uh, to name a couple. Carlton Williamson also in that draft. They redid their entire secondary. I'm not saying it's there. It's not even Tim McKay or Don Griffin caliber yet, but I think we're seeing some potential here from the secondary. Now, we've only saw a small sample size of Ambry Thomas, so even though stock is up, it's not all the way up because he still has to prove it. And he's going to have a tough one against the Philadelphia Eagles. He's going to get lined up with Devontae Smith. He's going to get lined up with A.J. Brown, unless the 49ers decide to travel with Charvarius Ward. So stock up in a big way for Ambry Thomas. So who else has stock up? Well, I think his counterpart, Charvarius Ward. Charvarius Ward was absolutely fantastic against the Seattle Seahawks. He went... Play for play, blow for blow with DK Metcalf, and he was able to hold Metcalf in check. There were no big plays down the field. Traverse Ward had opportunities for two interceptions in this game. I thought that Traverse Ward played great. This was the, what the exact 49ers signed him for, to go out and be an elite corner on the outside that could travel with a big-time wide receiver like DK and take him out of the game. By doing that, they made it easier on Ambry Thomas. It made it easier on Diameter Lenore. Uh, so Charverius Ward coming out there, standing up, and making big-time plays was huge. What I like about the way he's been playing, he's been playing with no fear. Yeah, he's still able to stay over the top on the vertical, but he's been playing a lot more sticky. The same way Ambry Thomas has come up and played more physical with the wide receivers, been more sticky in coverage, given less space, it's got to be a coaching point because both guys are doing it. Yomar Lenore has been selfless and going into the nickel because he can make a lot more money playing on the outside, but he's doing that for his football team to make them better. His versatility has helped Charverius Ward and Ambry Thomas be better. But Ward's ability to say, hey, here we go. It's third and 12. Go line up on A.J. Brown. Go line up on D.K. Metcalf. Go line up on whoever it is, Cooper Cup. And I want you to take them out of the game. Makes it easier for the rest of the defense to be able to give help. So, yes, if they play sticky coverage with Thomas, Traverius Ward, that's going to make it easier also for the pass rush. All of a sudden, quarterbacks used to get rid of the football in 2.4 seconds and less. Now they have to hold on to it a little bit longer, and that's usually when you go from getting pressures and hits to getting quarterback sacks. So it's been huge and pivotal. Now all we need is Mooney Ward to get a couple of those interceptions. Those balls you got your hands on, turn those into interceptions, and then you will become the elite corner that the 49ers were hoping they were going to get when they signed him last offseason. Uh, so let's let's hope that they can do it. But two years of Traverse Ward has definitely worked out. I want to talk about the safety position. Jair Brown, stock up. Uh, he comes in in haste because Al Noah Fong is injured, and he played really well. But you wonder how much of that is just him reacting, right, and being a, a product of circumstance. Well, he had a, they had a full week to prepare for him. Not a full week, but a short week to prepare for Jair Brown. And if ever you were going to attack a weakness of the 49ers defense, you would have think it would have been the young rookie Jair Brown. 49ers, of course, did a good job protecting him, keeping him in a deep third, and allowing him just to roll over the top, reading the coverage of the quarterback's eyes. Uh, he, he did a really good job. And I think that's what I'm highly excited about, was he was good at tackling. He did have one where he got juked by Zach Charbonnet. Welcome to the NFL. That's going to happen uh, with elite players in space. And Charbonnet's pretty good in space. I wouldn't say elite, but he's good in space. Uh, but you saw a guy that was where he was supposed to be. And we didn't hear his name called for getting beat. His first time against Tampa Bay, he got beat a little bit. But since then, nothing. Played well. He had three big plays in that Tampa Bay game, including an interception. So 
Jair Brown stock up, and the 49ers need Jair Brown to play really well because they have Deshaun Gibson, and Gibson's been playing at a Pro Bowl level for two years. But when you lose an all-pro caliber player in Talanoa Fonga, you're not going to replace his production. You're not going to replace his instincts. So what you're hoping is that you're going to get a stable, able body to play safety at a high level. And right now, Jair Brown's doing good. Now, Philadelphia, they've got a full week to prepare. They're going to come out and try to target number 27, Jair Brown, and take advantage of opportunities to get him. But we've seen him have the ability to not just help in the run game, but also the ability to find and locate the ball. The play made on Mike Evans against Tampa Bay, where he found the ball, got his head around, and was able to knock the ball away, that is good, especially for a young player. A lot of young players would have got physical, got into the body of Mike Evans, and got a pass interference call because he wouldn't have been able to come back towards the ball. So we're seeing Jair Brown play with poise and play within his skill set and for Steve Wilkes to trust him. That was a situation where Wilkes didn't care who the safety was. He wanted to blitz Isaiah Oliver, and he needed that safety to do his job. The fact that the 49ers trusted Jair Brown to do it is good news, and we've heard all the great things coming out of the 49ers locker room. They've been saying Jair Brown focuses on what the game plan is. He prepares like he's going to start every single game. This is when Hufanga was there, right? There's no chance for Jair Brown to get on the field besides injury, but he prepared to make sure he was ready and have, if the opportunity presented himself, he would come in and not look like he was a rookie. And I thought he did a very good job. I was even more encouraged by what I saw from what he did against Seattle. No big mistakes. If teams aren't able to take advantage of the safety position with Jair Brown out, I mean, with Jair Brown out there and Talado Ufunga out, the 49ers got to feel like they got a big win. And, of course, they need him to stay on the field. They got to expect Jair Brown. He's got to stay healthy. Him and Gibson are the keys to the 49ers' success on the back end. One of the strengths of this 49ers' defense this entire year has been the safety position. You didn't hear them called very many times in negative plays. They just played sound, consistent football. Now Jair Brown's got to take over for Hufanga, and he's got to do his job. Uh, but I think stock is up on a young player who's stepping in, and maybe we're going to have a young stud on our hands who could eventually be a big-time safety for the 49ers down the road. Don't want to get ahead of ourselves, just so we can talk about Ambry Thomas. Stock up, but stock not all the way up to its highest potential yet. But make some big plays against Philadelphia. I'll be back to talk about you next week about your stock going up even more. Brock Purdy. Stock goes up every single week. Brock Purdy is just phenomenal. And I think some of the throws that he makes completely shock the national media. The throw that he ripped to Brandon Ayuk to put the 49ers uh, up by, you know, 31 to 13. It was an absolute dime. He threw it between four defenders. Uh, Ayuk came out of his break. He was looking to flatten out the route. Brock led him up the field and to the goal line. Brock is throwing receivers open. I mean, Greg Cassell talked on KMBR about the fact that that was an elite anticipated anticipation throw. It was. Brandon Ayuk hadn't even come out of his break yet, and the ball was already getting ready to be thrown. And Brock put it in the exact position it needed to be. Those are elite plays. The other things that make Brock Purdy an elite caliber player is also his mobility in the pocket. He's climbing the pocket. He's moving within the pocket. He gets outside. Last year, it was more roll to the left, uh, escape, roll all around. Now it's more defined. You could tell it's an experienced uh, quarterback in the pocket who always keeps his eyes downfield but is not willing to make dangerous throws. He makes good throws. Uh, he does a really good job of making sure he protects the football. Only six interceptions to 19 touchdowns, four to, more than a three-to-one ratio, which is superb for Brock Purdy. I mean, that's elite caliber as far as touchdowns to taking care of the ball. Brock Purdy's just been doing it all. He's been getting the Fourniers in the right, uh, for, uh, right plays uh, for every formation, every defense they see. But he's tasked with winning the football game as far as, hey, they're loading the box. It's going to be on you, Brock, and your wide receivers. He does a very good job. Brock Purdy, stock up. And at some point, stock is going to go to, through the roof. And we're going to start talking about this guy. Right now, he's sixth best in the MVP voting. But if he has a big game against Philadelphia, and if he continues to play the way that he's played over the last few weeks, he's going to be in that MVP conversation because the 49ers are not just going to be deemed as the best team, but they're going to be best uh, deemed the best team with the best quarterback and weapons surrounding him. So Brock Purdy's stock way, way up. Charlie Warner. Uh, I got to love Charlie Warner. So early on in the year, he struggled a little bit with his blocking. 
And it kind of made me wonder, like, what's up? Because that's what he's known for. But now, since they've come out of the bye week, and Trent Williams is back, not only is Charlie Warner blocking like crazy, making sure he makes great blocks. I mean, there was a run play a couple weeks ago against Tampa where he did a duo block with George Kittle and then came off, and he blocked the corner on the outside to free up Elijah Mitchell on a, on a toss play. It was just superb. His technique in blocking is fantastic. If you're an offensive blocking nerd like I am, those types of plays, they get you excited because you see the way that guys can block and open holes in the run game, and there's something special about that, and Charlie Warner's really good at it. The other thing that I've really liked, and we've been seeing this a little bit, where the Warriors go to their 12 and 22 personnel. So that's one running back, two tight ends, two running backs, two tight ends. In those types of situations, and Warner's out there with Kittle, the 49ers haven't been afraid to put him out in routes. And I thought that is really nice. And this week, they actually checked it down to him. So Charlie Warner stayed in, kept the defensive end. Then he released up the field. The defender in the middle of the field in the zone was staying on Kittle, and he got it to Warner, and Warner got nine yards. If Charlie Warner can start be being proficient in catching the football, that could be huge because Kyle likes going to those personnel groupings with two tight ends, whether it's 12 or 22, because of the look it gets from the defense. Last week, you had Seattle trying to run three safeties. Well, if you want to run three safeties against a 22 personnel, be our guest. We're going to load up and we can run the football on you. You have a light box usually. And the third guy in the in the linebacker room in that situation is a safety. Uh, so you can go ahead and load up instead of them going to base. And if teams go to base, if you have a proficient tight end besides George Kittle that can beat a linebacker in space, you feel more comfortable. Now, I'm not ready to say stock up so much that Charlie Warder is going to start making a huge impact in the passing game. But I think he could be a real threat in the red zone. Because you pay so much attention to everyone else, you ignore a player like Charlie Warner, especially one that's tasked consistently with blocking, whether that being on the edge or going in motion or even moving pre uh, post-snap to across the formation to block an edge defender. All of a sudden, he goes in motion or goes after the snap, and you see him do this every single time. They're used to him going ahead and blocking down on that edge defender. The edge defender is always trying to squeeze down on it to trap him. Well, what happens now if you do the same thing is play action and Warner runs right by him into the flat for a big play. All of a sudden, it gives you more options. So him starting to catch the ball, he caught one pass. I don't want to get over the top. His blocking is really what makes him a stock up 49er. But I love the fact Warner could be diversifying his game a little bit. And maybe he's going to be an actual option for the 49ers. And let's be clear. He caught the ball six yards down the field and he got an extra three. So he went forward. That is fantastic for the 40 years. So Charlie Warner, stock up. Mitch Wisnowski. Mitch Wisnowski has punted so good all season. And you don't want to have punts in football games. You want to be able to convert and get points. You don't want to leave open frames. You want to get field goals. You want to get touchdowns, especially. But Mitch Wisnowski is becoming a weapon for the 49ers on special teams. A special team that hasn't played great this season. But when Mitch Wisnowski's out there, good things happen. He's pinned teams inside the 20 16 times this year. He has been very effective of getting the ball down inside the five. He has looked good. And I think that is an important weapon because when you need to flip the field in a situation where you got stopped on a three and out and you didn't get the, the type of plays on offense that you needed, Mitch Wisnowski can come out there and flip the field position and make it put less pressure on your defense. Uh, so I think Wisnowski's having a phenomenal year. I think he's a Pro Bowl punter this year and I think he should be in the conversation for all pro he's played that good as a punter and right now the 49ers lean on him hey we have a bad drive that's okay he can get it done oh it would have been a 65 yard field goal we can't do that he's gonna punt it and we don't have to worry about it not being a good net yardage situation he's gonna get it down near the 10 yard line or inside the 10 those are huge you don't really think about them too much but when you saw Seattle pin back because Wisnowski was punting and getting them inside the 10-yard line, inside the 5-yard line, how much more difficult it was for Seattle. First, just trying to get space to get out of there. Don't want any big turnovers. Want to give space to your punter in case you can't convert. But you can't really open up your offense. It allows defense to get a quick stop and then get you the ball back in prime field position. And one of those situations, the 49ers got it at the 45-yard line of the Seattle Seahawks, nearly in scoring position. So that's the impact Mitch Wisnowski's had on the 49ers football team this year. Stock up. 
Mitch Wisnowski. Back up to his counterpart, Jake Moody. Jake Moody quietly hasn't missed a single field goal in a while. He's been perfect on extra points lately. He's 17 of 20 on the season. Yeah, we saw him have a rough patch at Cleveland, Minnesota, uh, you know, Cincinnati area. The losing streak was not good for Jake Moody, but since then, he's been able to see the ball go through and consistently got field goals. Kyle Shanahan has also not had to kick a lot of long field goals with Jake Moody. Moody's problems have been closer to 45 to 55 yards. That's where he's had his struggles the deeper. Of course, Cleveland was 41, so we got to remember that. But Jake Moody has quietly started getting into a rhythm, and that's exactly what you need because when you get to playoff time, you need to be able to count on Jake Moody. But if he feels like he's automatic again, he doesn't have to think about it too much. He just sees the ball go through. I think it's going to be good for him. But I got to give stock up because there were some some struggles there for a little bit. But since then, he's been consistent, and he's been doing a very good job. And right now, inside 40 yards, he's basically automatic. That's really good. And I'd love to see it become automatic from 50 in. But that's something we're going to continue to see from the development of a rookie kicker. Stock up, Steve Wilkes. Right? I mean, Steve Wilkes has been absolutely fantastic lately. Uh, since the bye week, he has been firing on all cylinders. He has been doing it all. I've been just so impressed with what Steve Wilkes has been doing on defense. Right, He saw what needed to be done. He saw that they, they needed to improve the pass rush. It's gotten better. A lot of that was John Lynch going out and getting Chase Young. That was absolutely huge. But he also started playing sticky coverage. He started disguising coverages. He started bringing uh, different types of blitz blitz packages he started to go ahead and show different types of looks with defensive ends being in an a gaps steve wilkes diversified what he did but also took elements of what D'Amico ryan's was doing as far as disguising coverages and the things that his defense was comfortable with and using those i do believe that there's been a real belief in the 49ers pass rush since chase young got there and five sacks per game over the that three game stretch 15 sacks total 68 pressures the big reason why you can play tighter coverage on the back end if you don't have to worry about getting smoked by double moves because you know your defensive line is going to get home. And I think that's exactly what happened. But you got to give kudos for Steve to Steve Wilkes for making those adjustments and being willing to take those chances to have better defense. During the first five games, his whole role and whole motto was eliminate explosives, stop the run, eliminate explosives, and he believed he could get off the field. Well, now they're being more aggressive. It's not just about eliminating explosives, but it's about putting pressure on opposing offenses and getting after them. So I've got to give major credit to Steve Wilk. Wilk stock up, doing a great job, using his players to the best of their ability, getting the most out of their talents. And since that's happened, not only are they giving up less points, they're giving up yes, less yards in the run game, they're giving up less yards in the pass game. They're just a better defense from top to bottom. Could it be some Chase Young? Yes. It's a lot about Steve Wilkes and how he started disguising coverages and going back to what the 49ers defense does really well. Sam Womack. Womack comes back. Yes, he hasn't played defensive snaps, but he was out there playing on special teams, and he did a very good job down one of those plays inside. What he does is give the 49ers some versatility also in case something happens in the secondary. Now you have a guy that started games at nickel, and he started games outside. So if something happens, heaven forbid, to Ambry Thomas or Diamond or Lenore, you now have a very capable option. I talked earlier about it could go back to Isaiah Oliver. Well, now Womack could potentially give you a situation where he could go in, whether it's limited or not, uh, go in there and do some things for you and have some flexibility. So Womack coming back is pivotal for the special teams who struggled. We know that's a big part of the four years needing to ha have some success as special teams need to grow and get better. And I think that Womack is going to be huge. Same with Darrell Luter Jr. You got to give stock up to Darrell Luter Jr. Because where Womack was helping down plays inside the five-yard line, Darrell Luter Jr. was running down D. Eskridge. What a freaking play. That could have been a touchdown for Seattle. All the momentum would have went right back to Seattle after Brock Purdy and that offense had went down and scored a touchdown with Debo's run in. Eskridge gets 66 yards, but what he doesn't get is a touchdown. And what the Seahawks don't get because of it is a, is a touchdown. They get a field goal. Because Darrell Luter Jr. did not give up, absolutely hustled, and ran down Eskridge. And Eskridge is a fast dude. That shows how quick Darrell Luter Jr. is. 
which makes me optimistic. Number one, he's going to add his special teams right now and stock up special teams players is exactly what the 49ers do. The fact we're talking about two kickers, right? The punter, the kicker, and then two other guys in Womack and Luter Jr. as stock up players is good news because we need that special teams to play good. And besides kick coverage, they haven't been too bad. They were able to get a turnover on a punt. Uh, they were also able to pin them down a couple of times. So yes, Terrell Luter Jr. is making an impact. And I wonder what he'll look like when he finally gets on the field and gets some reps. I'm hoping he's not this year that he gets reps in the secondary unless it's a blowout because I like the guys we have up front and I want all of them to play you know, really good. Lenore, Ambry Thomas, and uh, Traverius Ward. I want them to play great. But Terrell Luter Jr., optimistically looking at it at speed like, oh, maybe this guy can run with some of the better wide receivers in the league. That's good news. He's big. He's physical. Uh, he's a good tackler. He's going to help on special teams. Stock up. Terrell Luter Jr., and stock up to Robert Beal. Robert Beal Jr. got activated. Did not think this was possible. Actually, I thought that Darrell Luter Jr. and Robert Beal were probably going to be IR the entire year. Luter Jr. stay on the pup list. Robert Beal on the IR. But here we are. George Odom goes on the IR, and they bring Robert Beal back. Talking about a six foot five, 250-pound guy that can run a 4-4-40 and help on special teams. That's probably his impact right now. But Drake Jackson being on the IR... Now you've got another speed element off the edge if you decide to use it. I don't know if that's the case. I don't know how good his, his technique is right now with his hands. Uh, Saw a limited uh, you know, amount of what he could do at Georgia. I mean, yeah, the SEC is good, but it's not NFL good. We haven't really seen him too much against NFL teams. That's going to be curious as far as pass rush. But what you add potentially is someone that can help you on special teams. And in a pinch, you have an injury to one of your top four rotational defensive ends a guy that could give you some snaps. Daryl Tapp, Chris Casser, got to continue to work on him setting the edge. Wasn't terrible at Georgia doing it. He's actually pretty good. But he has that, get the, you know, G G GTFO, I think Chris Casser called it, get the F off ability where he gets off the ball extremely quickly and you can have some whole shot opportunities. Like I said before, I don't expect him to crack the rotation. That includes, you know, Chase Young, Nick Bosa, Cleveland Farrell, and Randy Gregory. I think those guys are going to keep rotating and be in that position. But eventually, if something happens or if he starts stepping up and he is active, you could go to a five-man rotation. So uh, you got to give stock up to Beal, even though he hasn't played in a game, just for getting active. It means they see something in him, either defensively or special teams. Either way, they were willing to make that move and leave the safeties right now on the 53-man roster with just two guys, with Jair Brown and Tashawn Gibson. Of course, they've signed Eric Harris. They're going to have... Uh, you know, somebody probably come up from the practice squad as well. We'll see if also with Luter Jr., Womack being back, if that means we could see Isaiah Oliver taking snaps at safety as well. But I thought this was a fun episode to do because we have some guys we want to talk about, and these guys are playing better. Their stock is up. Thanks for watching. Like and subscribe to the channel. If you think I deserve a subscription, I really appreciate it. If you share the video or like it, it goes to help the algorithm and kick this out to other 49er fans or other fans interested in 49ers football. If you're listening on audio platform, 49ers Cutback on Believe. I really appreciate it. Thanks for watching. And of course, just like always, uh, you can check out me and Mark Adams on the PSF, at PSF app. We'll be on there Wednesdays at 2 p.m. Pacific for a preview show. You can check that out. And if you want standalone content, go over to Patreon, Ant Hill Show, Ant Classic Show, Slightly Offsides. All those shows are available over there, including film breakdowns, where I go through the All-22 and break it down from my coaching perspective of coaching over the years. So uh, thanks, everyone, for watching. I really appreciate it. This episode was brought to you by Bet Online, where the game starts. Look forward to more content coming your way. Plenty. We're going to get into a lot of the 49ers versus Philadelphia Eagles matchups. Uh, but until then, stay safe and remember the right way is always the 49ers way.